Arc GPUs, the future of AI for creative professionals, and why one engineer switched from NVIDIA to Intel. We sat down with Tom Peterson, a fellow at Intel in the GPU division, to discuss all of these things coming up right now. Why did Intel release the laptop GPUs first rather than desktop GPUs for the Arc? Because often that's the other way around. You're absolutely right. I've gotten that question a couple times. It's really interesting. And it, and it goes to the heart of what is our strategy? Like, how are we going to get in the GPU business in a big way? And and so we're our strategy is to go from our position of strength first. And if you think about the business and the market in general, Intel is actually shipping the vast majority of notebook platforms, right? Intel CPUs are basically everywhere. And that means that we have deep relationships with our, our OEM partners, right? We, we've we been doing business with our, our friends for 30 years, and we, we have whole teams that do notebook innovation, right? They're, they're highly embedded with OEMs on notebooks. And so the thinking is, well, we can, we can make those platforms better, and we can do it with a team that's already friends, right? These people already know each other. And so taking that first step in kind of a controlled way where we can get lots of feedback from the OEMs and we can iterate drivers, we can make things perfect before we get into the market and start facing a, a dramatic, uh, you know, aggressive competition from, uh, you know, other colors. So, you know, our, yeah, our strategy is let's take it a little easy. Let's be a little bit humble and let's make sure that we're delighting our customers first then get ready for the rumble, right? The rumble's going to happen this summer, and we've had a little bit of time to kind of get our sea legs under under us. And so when we launch our discrete products, you know, we're not going to be uh, the brand new to this. We're going to have a little bit of experience in a place that we are strong and, you know, we know everybody. So that's kind of the thinking. As we get into discrete, it's going to be much more you know, much more traditional, much more like, hey, uh, take this card, plug it in a box, and people are going to run performance benchmarks, and that's kind of it. In the notebook system, it's much more about platform integration, making it thin and light, managing the power. So it's it's more of a platform uh, technology, whereas the discrete graphics business is much more of a single device kind of argument where where it's it's a little bit more in your face, show me a benchmark chart, and that's all I need to talk about, right? It's going to be very interesting. That's one of the things I was curious about as far as the Arc systems is basically we've been seeing great battery life out of the Evo platform. Um, that's been wonderful. But are we going to be able to keep that battery life and add performance on top of it? Because I haven't been able to review one yet. What are we seeing so far? Well, the you know all of the current Arc notebooks are Evo systems. So if you, if you think about uh, that thin and light platform you've come to hope and love and respect, we're just making it better by adding the Arc GPU to that platform. Awesome. Awesome. See, that's super good news because I'm like, okay, great. Like I'm excited for more performance, but I don't want to, I don't, here's battery life. I don't want to see this go down in order to get this up. Yeah, I know. It, and it's, it's a, uh, there's lots more to be done here in this space. Uh, but, but you can imagine that again, we we're doing the platform, right? We have people that are looking at platform power, looking at platform energy. So we can balance uh, the performance and the power consumption to, to be the you know right mix uh, for the platform. One thing I was wondering in, in regards to the discrete uh, demographic or, you know, product, what is something that you've been able to do at Intel or what is something that you want to see happen when you launch the discrete platform? Because like you said, it's usually all about just straight performance benchmarks. Is there something you're trying to push into the market or push into the ecosystem that's different with Arc? Well, it's, it's, um, it's true that, uh, on the discrete GPU side, the first thing people are going to look for is performance, right? But but the second thing is, does it play, you know, what are the new features that we can do? So we are launching a bunch of new features with the Arc uh, platform. They work on notebook and discrete. And we have several different display technologies that I think people are going to love. One is called Smooth Sync. So this is pretty cool technology. It it I don't know how much of a gamer you are, but if you play games, you're struggling with this thing called tearing. And tearing is when you see like these shimmering lines on your display because the top line is an old frame and then a new frame gets done, <clears throat> excuse me, right in the middle 
and it'll it'll actually call, show a different frame on the bottom half of the screen and that difference looks like a world is tearing right because you're seeing half of two different worlds what we do with smooth sync is we actually blend between those frames so you don't actually see that tearing line very much you actually see more of a smooth kind of gradient between the two and that that gets away from this sort of like a jittery juttery feeling that you get when you're looking at tearing so that's that's pretty cool and that's going to be available with all arc gpus it's called smooth sync is that going to be something that's going to be application specific or will it be over everything just because everything. i've seen that same thing on like video editing when i'm scrubbing mm -hmm. on the timeline oh yep. great news I love yeah it. it works on all g it works on all games it's part of our it's implemented in our display engine so if you think about our display engine it's kind of drawing those lines on the screen and when it sees a tear because it knows when things are tearing it just blends inside the display engine from one frame to the next frame that's called again uh smooth sync now the other tech is called speed sync which we're also launching with all arc gpus speed sync is the idea of everybody wants to have very low latency but typically when you get very low latency you're going to get this tearing again because you have v-sync off so what we do is we actually, underneath the applications back, we say, you know, run as fast as you can, but we're gonna just show the user one frame, one complete frame, and let the engine kind of render frames underneath the, you know, kind of in the background. And then once we finish showing one frame, we'll just grab whatever frame was most recently rendered. So that's not the way graphics typically work. Typically you have to show every frame that's rendered, and that slows down the latency. If you have vSync on, and with vSync off you get tearing, this is a new middle way where we kind of say, we're gonna kind of let the game run as fast as it can, but we're only gonna show completed frames on the screen. Interesting, very That's cool. It's pretty cool. It makes it, it, it gives you the benefit of both low latency and no tearing. Nice. In, in regards to discrete GPUs, that if I'm not mistaken, that's five and seven. We, three just launched, correct? Three is um, uh, just launched. Five and seven are coming later this summer. Okay, and so those will be offered, correct me if I'm wrong, both in laptops and desktops? So it'll be like the mobile package, and then there'll be like the desktop package. Yeah, both use the same SOCs, so it'll be the same chips, but they're gonna show up in different form factors. You'll see some in notebooks that are integrated onto the notebook motherboards. Others will be built onto discrete you know, cards and they get plugged in to a, pla a desktop. Okay, will they have, uh, most likely, will they have different wa uh, power draws and wattages? Yeah, they will. They'll have different power budgets. And so for example, the we already said the ARC 350M is uh, the lowest end SKU. It's got six XE cores. It ranges between 25 and 35 watts. So think of it as very power constrained. Yeah. On the other end of the notebook uh, GPUs, these, by the way, the ones we launched already are all notebook versions of the GPUs. So the highest power one is the A770M, which is 120 to 150 watts. So think of wow. it as, you know, that's like five times or six times more power for the high-end ones versus the smallest thin and light ones. And Absolutely. that's why you can say the, the low-end ones are really targeting these Evo thin and light platforms, and the higher-end ones, which you'll see later this summer, are gonna be a little bit bigger thermal, a little bit higher power budgets, and they're more for gamers. Yeah, interesting. So you were saying the different packages, you know, like some have more of those calls. Will they have more encoders as well? Because this was one of the questions I had from my uh, like channel is, you know, like the other, different colors uh what they do with the gpus is they have the same encoder and then like the graphics power increases but will we have more encoders as well as we scale up with intel uh, all SKUs have the same encoding power which is as i said that 60 hertz at 8k so all the SKUs, even the lowest end SKUs, has that capability and we don't get bigger encoders as as it gets uh bigger silicon it's all basically the same encoder you you worked for nvidia previously is that correct I did. yes it is okay. correct what what inspired you to make the jump towards intel and are you having uh more freedom in this space or are you are you kind of tapping into more technology access like what is what is the difference between being at nvidia and now being at intel well um i i i came to intel because i got excited about the breadth of technology that is available for me as an engineer to to play with right intel invent as i said intel invented usb it's got the entire chipset 
all of that technology, I look uh, I look at it as sort of like a, a toolbox. And if I can figure out maybe maybe I can build a better mouse or maybe maybe we can make a better display or maybe we can somehow fuse GPUs and CPUs and make something different entirely. That's that's a type of work that I can do in a platform company much easier than I could do in a GPU company. So that's that's what kind of drove me first to, to consider working with Intel. And uh, since I've come here, it's turned out to be really true. I, I still think there's much more to be done. If, if you look at display technology specifically, now that we're doing a, a bigger GPU, we have a whole team that enables platform level uh, displays. So new panel technology, a lot of that comes from Intel working with the panel vendors. So I'm, I'm just very excited about what could we do for a next generation panel? You know, if we have deep relationships with the uh, panel vendors in Taiwan and China, and uh, that's going to enable us to do crazy stuff. And I, I have one idea that's sitting in the back of my head. I'm just going to share it with you right now. You ready? Absolutely. Okay. So when you look at a screen, you're looking at one spot on a screen, right? Okay. You're not looking, you can't really see the whole thing. You got to focus on one spot. Now, if you didn't update anything else on the screen except that one spot, what do you think your, your experience would be? You, you would think basically that the bulk of the screen was updating, even though we're only updating that one tiny little spot that you're looking at. That's a great so, point because as I look at the screen, you, my eye creates a, a focus kind of exactly. blend. Exactly. So the stuff in your periphery is not as important to update. Now, if we took advantage of that fact, what kind of display would we build? It's a totally different thing, right? You're not, you're not building a display that updates the entire display. You're building a display that updates kind of in these concentric circles away from wherever you're looking. So you would use the camera technology to spot your eye. Yes. And that's the kind of stuff. I mean, I, I, I don't know. I'm not aware of anybody that's doing that right now, but that's the kind of stuff that we're looking at. It's like, how can we leverage the entire platform and all the technology that's around us to, to do new things, right? And that's, uh, that's just one example. There's a m million things that we can do to improve gaming, improve creator, improve you know, the experience of, of humans on the planet in general. You know? And that sounds, it sounds like hyperbole, right? Where you're saying, we wanna make the life of every human better, but that's, that's, you know, we're that kind of company, we're that large and we have that kind of breadth that you know, we can invent things like USB and we can do Wi-Fi, you know, and, and who knows what the next, uh, the next AI technology is going to be, right? That's pretty darn cool stuff. Absolutely. I think, I think the reason you made the move is makes total sense. And it's, it's what a lot of consumers, even myself before getting into this space so deeply miss is they don't think about the breadth of what is being developed. They, they see what hits the market today. And what they don't realize is people like yourself are looking 10 years from now and making changes now that we will see later. And that is the type of innovation that is why Intel continues to be on the forefront of innovation. People are like, oh, you know, what's going on? What's Intel working on next? <laughs> These types of crazy things that, that come out um, are things that you guys work on now and we see later. Yeah, it's going to take, it, it takes some of the things that Intel does. Obviously, we're investing billions of dollars in building fabs, right? So we're making chips. But while we're making chips, we're also saying, how, you know, what are the big problems that we can solve for humanity that's going to make the, the world a better place? And you can look at what's happened with notebooks and what's happening with, you know, peripherals and USB. And then, you know, it's just, it's kind of amazing when you really take a look at the history of what Intel has accomplished. And that, that gives you some kind of kind of look forward about what's our potential and you know what kind of areas are we interested in. So is that one area that you are really interested in, the screen technology? I'd say my last question is, what is burning in you to see happen coming out of Intel? Um, well, I, th I, I am a, a huge booster and, and a huge, I, I just believe it in my heart that AI is the most important thing to happen basically since the industrial revolution. I don't think that's coming from me. I'm not the first person to say something like that. It's very true that AI is disrupting every industry. It's making new winners and new losers. It's changing the way creators work. It's changing the way gamers game. And I think the, that AI and rendering 
is about to get very different. Today you think about, you know, there's something called DLSS from one of our competitors. We have a technology called XESS, which is blending AI and render. I think that's just the beginning. And you're gonna see AI uh, smattered all across PCs. It's, you know, we have multiple different AI engines already in our CPUs, and we have now AI engines or matrix engines in our GPUs. So that's like where I get excited. How can I, how can I use AI to dramatically improve the PC experience? I mean, so when you're saying gosh. using AI, do you mean like it's making decisions uh, that you don't even know you need to be making yet? Like, how does that like actually play out while I'm working on a computer or gaming? Mm -hmm. Well, let's talk about gaming first because that's because that's technology that's out there today. AI today in a technology that we call XESS. What it does is it takes a low res image and then using its knowledge of what games look like and what, you know, we train this AI to know what a good frame is. And so it takes a low res image and it converts it to a beautiful high res image. And the way it does okay. it is it, it kind of gets, it gets information about what do, what do bushes look like? What do trees look like? And then it, it looks at the low res image and it says, I think that's probably a bush. <laughs> maybe, I should make it, maybe I should make this look beautiful, right? And that's yeah. what it's doing. That's, that's, that's obviously a, a, a oversimplification of what's really yeah. happening. But it's that idea. I, I can train an AI to improve an image that you don't even know AI is running, right? You don't even realize okay. that's, that's happening. Right? So rather than the performance, heat, thermal, wattage, building that image, you're using AI. AI, yeah. And, and it's much more power efficient. So you can r do less work to yeah. render the small image, and then you use AI to create a beautiful image that you that you can do more efficiently. And that means wow. you can have higher performance or you can have longer battery life or whatever you want. Wow. But again, that's just the first, first step in applying AI to uh, PCs. Like how about if you had AI that was actively helping you write? Like if you're actively, it's, it's watching you write your messages and it's learning what what kind of text do you like to write and it's suggesting not just the word or not just you know not just correcting spelling errors but offering you hey i think you want to write this paragraph what do you think ideas yeah wow so are we saying that ai could actually export a video one day why why not right if the way to think about it is anything that you can describe to a person that that you could hire and give them infinite amount of time if you can tell them how to do it then you can pretty much train an AI to do that a lot quicker and probably a lot better. So it's it's that kind of uh, power, and it's not just. By the way, it's not just ex, you know it's not just transcoding a video. Think of it as editing a video, right? Where the a yeah the AI would be you would you would tell the AI your preferences for what style editing do you want to do, and then the AI would maybe offer you five or six different rough cuts. And it's just automatic, right? And like if I basically imported my last hundred videos, it would learn where I cut my mess ups, maybe send it the original and the edit that I made. And then it's like, oh, Ben cut out all this. I get, I get how you like to cut your videos, right? Now it's, it's, that's, a, that's a future. But again, if you can think about anything that you would do over the course of a week, and, and if you had somebody watch you for your entire life, and could they replicate what you did, you know, in a, in a couple of weeks? And the answer is probably yes. If somebody just watched your behavior uh, on your video editing process, that's what you do when you train an AI. You just basically watch how somebody cuts. There's already a new technology that's embedded in Arc Control, which is the software that we're shift, you know, we're shipping with our GPUs. Um, it's called uh, Game Highlights. And what's happening is actually there's an AI that's present inside of our GPU that's watching your gameplay. And as it sees something exciting happen, it goes, oh, that was exciting. I'll start recording. And it, start, and it keeps recording until it's boring again. And then it stops recording. What? Which is yeah. totally like the whole YouTube, like, like the hot takes that YouTubers do and then post. And wow, that's so neat. Yeah, it's called Game Highlights. And it's shipping with Arc when we launch, you know, when we bring it out this, this summer. Wow. So it would cut that awesome moment we just had so we yep. can then put. <laughs> yes, that's exactly right. Wow. And so that's, that, that's the idea of AI is already all around you and you don't know it. And it's because it's not like a Borg that's trying to make decisions to control you. It's just trying to make life a little bit better by doing small things that, 
that you you would have wanted to have happen, right? It's 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 not it's uh, it's it's going to change everything. Now, this is just part two of the conversation that Lori and I had with Tom Peterson. So if you want to catch the first part of the conversation, then go ahead and click or tap the screen somewhere around here and go check it out.